What's good everyone, OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Today we've got a lot of awesome information to get into, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're starting off with Visions of Mana. New information on this game is coming soon, according to Midori, but the fabled Nintendo Switch version that many people have predicted will be coming has also been, I would say, not confirmed from Midori, but she states that it is happening. So let's jump into this because a lot of you guys want to know about Visions of Mana. Maybe if you should hold off for Nintendo Switch 2 version because the game is coming out this summer or so. So on Twitter, Midori said this about Visions of Mana. New information for Visions of Mana will be revealed soon. Please look forward to an update on the release date and more information on this title soon. So that's awesome right there. More information is coming. The game is coming out. It should be coming out sometime in the next couple of months or so. So I do feel that, yeah, that's not anything too crazy when it comes to information coming. We've got a lot of presentations coming up as well with the Summer Games Fest in addition to the Xbox show. So this makes sense from Midori. Then there was a question that was asked on Twitter underneath that post saying, is it coming to Switch 2? And then Midori said, this information is correct. So she's essentially confirming, at least with her sources, that it is coming to Nintendo Switch 2, which isn't really crazy because if you look at what Square Enix has done post the whole realignment and the reconfirmation when it comes to aggressively pursuing multi-platform development and what they want to do, you're seeing some things almost instantly be confirmed. Look at Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, which seems like that's going to be Dragon Quest 1 through 3 HD 2D Remake. That is coming to all platforms. Whereas a lot of Square Enix's Dragon Quest games and HD 2D games actually only launched on one platform or segmented releases. Now that's being released on pretty much every confirmation from Square Enix so if they're doing that with a game like Dragon Quest and if we look at Visions of Mana that game's on Xbox it's on PlayStation it's on PC it's not on Switch but it looks like they're going to be on Switch 2 to kind of preserve the graphical fidelity of that game so it makes complete sense here what Midori is saying when it comes to Visions of Mana coming to Nintendo Switch 2 and I kind of predicted that as well if you look at Trials of Mana which is the Seiken Densetsu 3 remake on the Nintendo Switch. That game did best on that platform, and it was on PC and PlayStation. Still not on Xbox, though, by the way, but that game did best on Nintendo platforms, and the Mana series is known to be on Nintendo platforms. And there is a little bit more information here because there was another question that was posed to Midori and the person asks, oh yeah, this was slated for summer. And Midori says, it is a title that might release a little later in summer. Development process was a little difficult because of multi-platform release. So once again, it's Square Enix adjusting. They do have multiple platforms. They're doing it on PC, they're doing it on Xbox, they're doing it on PlayStation. And they're doing it on Nintendo Switch 2 as well. So getting all those logistics and adjusting to this is going to be different for the team. It's a little bit different for them, but they're getting things done, which is awesome. And I think that this is the best way to go about it. If the Nintendo Switch 2 was coming out this year, they probably would have waited a bit more for it. But it looks like it's going to be 2025. So it doesn't really make sense to hold on to it then. I think people will buy the game when it comes out on the Nintendo Switch 2 sometime next year. If it does, I think people will pick it up then and people will be fine with the game in terms of the switch 2 version it should be okay but if you want to get it on xbox and playstation or pc you can get it there i know i'm going to be picking it up on the playstation 5 and then i will be picking up a copy on the nintendo switch 2 when that finally comes out at some point in next year or something like that so we'll see how it all works out but yeah very excited about visions of mana i think the game looks awesome and i cannot wait to play it when it releases in the summer or later in the summer or maybe early fall who knows when it's actually going to come out because they haven't said anything outside of summer 2024 so summer can stretch for a little bit longer than people think that it can but before we get into the next topic please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first now let's go ahead and jump right back into it we've got a tales of development this is one of the longest running rpg series out there tales of arise did incredibly well nearing 3 million or at 3 million when it comes to sales so definitely one of the better selling japanese rpgs out there so what's up with the next tales of game well tales of development team is quote working hard every day 
toward the future, says the series producer. All right, shout-outs to Noisy Pixel for this one. And the article, they said, shortly before the start of Tales of Festival 2024, this weekend, series producer Yusuke Tomizawa posted a slight update from his own Twitter account. Tomizawa became the series producer around 2018. He acknowledged that the passing of the Tales of franchise illustrator Mitsumi Inomata and upcoming shutdown of the Tales of Rays. However, even while facing these challenges, Tomizawa said that the development team is working hard every day toward the future. He mentioned the then about to start Tales of Festival 2024, asking fans to enjoy it. Of course, this year's festival had no new game announcements. Still, the Tales of Festival 2025 was officially announced for June 7th and June 8th, 2025 at the Yokohama Arena. Sadly, many Tales games, including Tales of Zillia 2, were recently delisted from PSN. Bandai Namco has not communicated regarding these delistings, prompting increasing concern over preservation for the franchise, which hasn't been great for a long while. Hopefully, Bandai Namco will soon announce re-releases for all of those delisted titles and plenty of neglected older ones. With Tales of Rays incoming shutdown, no mobile entries, making the franchise's status increasingly worrying, according to a lot of fans. So yeah, let's talk about this for a bit, because Tales of is a very interesting situation that's going on with this series, right? You have Tales of Arise, which did really well, and I think that that is a good thing to build off of for the next game. Tales of Arise, and I think if there was a Nintendo Switch version, or if there is a Switch 2 version, it could sell even better. But there has been some setbacks, there has been some sad things that have happened in terms of the development team, obviously the passing of the series illustrator, there's so many things that can impact the development that are kind of bigger than the game itself, right? So I'm very cognizant of all of that, but I'm hoping that everything works out for them. They're working on something, it's going to take some time before we see the next Tales game. Tales of Arise wasn't that long ago, but it is a very good game, one of the highest reviewed, one of the best selling Tales games in the series, but yeah, we we need to get some re-releases of some of these older titles that have been delisted. They haven't really been great on keeping them modern or up to date. There's a number of PS3 games and other titles that they just don't bring forward. We got Tales of Symphonia and that seemed to be like one of the worst versions of Tales of Symphonia despite it running at the 60 on the GameCube and it not necessarily being a complete remake of the game overall in terms of visuals and everything, which I understand, I get it. There was issues with the source code and getting it from GameCube and the PS2 version to PS3 version. There's been some problems, but but yeah, overall, Tales, it's a bit sketchy right now, right? There was really nothing to announce at the Tales of Festival. But I'm hoping that 2025 will be better for the team. There's been some setbacks. There's been some stuff. But I think maybe next year will be better. And hopefully we get something in terms of an announcement for a brand new Tales game or the re-release of Tales games and getting them all on modern systems for the fans out there. So let's get into the next topic here. And I want to talk about the Kingdom Hearts situation that's going on with the summer games fest because i found this to be interesting i didn't think it was newsworthy at first but apparently people are getting pretty upset about this so recently jeff Keeley conducted a q a on twitch ahead of the summer games fest event that's happening later this week which i will be streaming that event so look forward to that as a key personality and host of this upcoming show, he answered several questions about the event and his thoughts on certain games. This is from Noisy Pixel Writing. He also emphasized the freedom of co-streaming the event quite heavily. Unfortunately, regarding Kingdom Hearts, Keeley claimed he, quote, didn't know why people have kept asking about his potential presence at the event. He supposed that it's because Final Fantasy VII Rebirth was present last year. However, he goes on to say that, quote, people are setting themselves up for failure for having those expectations, end quote, but you guys can keep hoping. To say this is a disappointment is an understatement considering the general lack of concrete news on Kingdom Hearts 4. It's worth noting that this isn't an outright denial that Kingdom Hearts won't be shown since maybe Keeley simply wants to keep it a surprise. Still, it's best to temper expectations for Summer Games Fest before it goes live on June 7, 2024 at 5pm ET. Now, here's the thing about this, guys. This is a double-edged sword for Keeley because he's answering questions. One thing that you don't want to do is kind of lead people on right you don't want to tempt and lead people on with that and saying you know what uh, like oh it could be there you know so if anything if it's not going to be there just say hey look you know you're setting yourself up like it's not going to be there i think people got upset at the wording not that he kind of just put it down but the wording seemed to be what upset kingdom hearts fans 
when it comes down to it. Because if I was Keely and you're not going to have Kingdom Hearts 4, then you definitely don't want to set people up, right? You don't want to let people know like, hey, you know, it could happen when it's not going to. And you're like, oh my gosh, he baited us. He led us on and everything. But then again, you don't want to necessarily completely shut the door because you don't want to ruin the surprise. So it's almost like a double-edged sword. You just don't know what's going to happen here. And I want to go into a little bit more of that disappointment from one of the biggest Kingdom Hearts fans that I know, fellow content creator, friend of mine, my man HMK. And he had this to say about it because he quote tweeted it, I think multiple times. Yeah, two times. So the first tweet, he said, hey guys, what's your most anticipated game? What y'all want to see? Would it be cool to see it? What do you expect? What? Kingdom Hearts? LOL. Here's another 20 minute segment of showing how tight I am with Kojima. So basically kind of playing a little bit, you know, joking around there and kind of bashing the way that he went about it. And then another tweet at Jeff Keighley saying, if you're going to laugh off people hoping for Kingdom Hearts at your show, stop asking us what we hope for and quit the engagement farming so once again and you have a lot of people a thousand plus people who did like that a lot of views on it so that's kind of how a lot of people are feeling like wait a minute you're trying to bait us out or something like that so i get it from both sides you know i think keely was trying to make sure that people don't have these expectations that are kind of not going to happen but at the same time the way that he went about it but I understand from both sides, I just wanted to kind of give you guys what was happening there in the Kingdom Hearts fandom, but I am looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 4. I do think Kingdom Hearts 4 is going to be something very different for the Kingdom Hearts franchise, so I'm looking forward to seeing more on it. But let's get into the next topic here, and this is interesting because Midori is talking a bit more about Nintendo, but she stated in the future she will be more careful. But I want to go over what she said about here about potentially another Splatoon game. So Midori said that there is a game project at Nintendo with the code name Spiral. By researching the data I have received in the last month, it's very likely that this is the code name for the next entry in the Splatoon series. So she's going on about a couple different things here. She also had another tweet saying, and I will send proof of my code name data to trusted sources and trusted members on family boards in the future and also went on to say i will be careful now with nintendo overall so this is interesting because splatoon 3 is going on its two-year anniversary coming up here so it's already been two years since splatoon 3 came out if you're looking at it in general if you're building off of the engine that they already currently have and everything and you're getting ready for nintendo switch 2 release in 2025 and if you look at the distance between splatoon 2 to splatoon 3 that was about four to five years or so 2017 2022 so about five years when it comes down to it if you're looking at it yeah obviously they're gonna get the next splatoon game up and coming and ready now there was a smaller gap between splatoon 1 and splatoon 2 that was only two years between those games but that makes sense because that was going from the wii u to the switch and they wanted to have a big multiplayer hit game to play within the first number of months for engagement and to get people competitively playing and hooked on their nintendo switches so that same strategy could be implied here with what's happening with splatoon 3 to splatoon 4 or the next splatoon game they could have a game ready in the next three four years so that would put it at right about 2025 or 2026 now if i'm nintendo i want to get splatoon ready as soon as possible but i don't want to sacrifice the quality of what makes splatoon so great so if you can get it out in the launch year of the nintendo switch 2 in 2025 maybe late 2025 and have a three and a half plus year development that would be great if you can't then that's fine wait for 2024 but hopefully Nintendo can get something ready, something ready to go in 2025 and have some really cool upgrades and additions, some true new things to the Splatoon franchise. I think Splatoon 3 is pretty much the perfect embodiment of what Splatoon is. Overall, there was some rocky stuff that happened at first with the disconnects, but it seems like it's kind of shored up over the last number of months, at least the times that I played. So I do think heading into the Nintendo Switch 2, getting all of that cleared up in addition to actually adding some cool new modes and a bunch of things could really take the splatoon series again in a new direction but also keep the fans that it had before because of the gameplay and how it's so unique and fun splatoon is an awesome idea i think that it's an idea that nobody else can kind of emulate we haven't seen anything like it overall it's a unique mix of the third person shooter paintball and all sorts of other stuff that people like right and i think that's the reason why splatoon has been a double noun 10 plus million seller 
overall on Switch hardware. So that's hard to do for any franchise. And Splatoon has done it in a relatively short amount of time. If you look at when Splatoon originally came out in 2015, the series has not been around for that long, but it's had a very high sales ratio. So I think this is going to be good. Hopefully Nintendo can get something ready, but also add in new things to kind of improve on the formula that they did with Splatoon 3. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section. But we are going to move on to the next topic here, and that is Damon X Machina, Titanic Scion. I think that this could be the first actual Nintendo Switch 2 game from Marvels that they are showing off because they keep on showing this game and I think this is the second time there was first an announcement and then now they actually had like some visuals looks like CG but they've shown nothing when it comes to the release date and when it comes to the platform so once again the radar goes off when it comes to Switch 2 for those who don't remember Damon X Machina the original game was a Nintendo Switch console exclusive and I think it still is at this point it's on Steam and yeah PC but it's not on any other console so let's get into this one here publisher Marvelous and developer First Studio have released a teaser trailer for the third person mech shooter Damon X Machina Titanic Scion platforms and release date remain unannounced here is the details on the game. First revealed during last year's Marvelous Game Showcase, Damon X Machina Titanic Scion once again closed out this year's showcase, where Marvelous President Subinobu Saito shared an evocative look at Marvelous's first studio's mech action sequel. Additional details, including platforms and a release window, will be announced at a later date. So it does seem like they are kind of maybe waiting for the Nintendo Switch 2 overall because if it was not going to be on that platform and it was going to be on xbox and playstation and switch or pc you would just announce it at this point because remember it was first revealed last year and now this year so we're going on two calendar years and no platforms at this point that is very abnormal for a developer to do that over the course of two calendar years so that means that there's something that they want to talk about but they can't talk about at this point so i'm guessing it's the nintendo switch 2 and we'll see how everything is I'm hoping Marvelous is better with this game than they were when it comes to Damon X Machina because they were crazy overall with content creators and covering the game. Yes, I guess the game was successful. Obviously, it's getting a sequel, but I think it could have been far more successful if they actually allowed people to use footage and talk about the game. They kept on copyright claiming everything. So hopefully they don't do that this time because I think Damon X Machina has the ability to become bigger, but you need people to talk about it. It's a mech game. Mech games are not huge types of IPs out there. So you need people discussing your game, Marvelous. So I'm hoping they're better with this one. Let's see how this works out when I use the footage. Y'all will know because either I'll show it or not. So let me know what you guys think about Damon X Machina in the comment section below. But that is going to wrap it up for everything here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.